In several videos of the series, the disadvantages of the nuclear fission have been examined. It might look like an omission, and that we have not mentioned another option at which nuclear physics have been working for a long time, to develop an industrial scale the generation of energy from the fusion. To compare the two systems, we first remember how the electrical energy is generated from thermal energy. In the conventional thermal power plants the energy of the combustion heats up the water. The generated steam moves turbines, and these move alternators which produce electrical energy. In the fission plants, the nuclear energy with all its complexities is simply used to heat a fluid up. Except in a variant, this fluid heats in turn water to generate steam and to move the turbines. The process is always more complicated and risky than in the conventional thermal plants. How did all that begin? In 1896 Henri Becquerel was the first scientist to be interested in radioactivity. He studied the effects associated with the emissions of uranium salts. Investigations started, that much later conducted to the fission of atomic nuclei. He was a friend of the Curies and was the first scientist who found on his own body that radiation could cause serious burns. Henri Becquerel's father, Edmund, had studied the photoelectricity more than 50 years before his son's research on radiation. The generation of electricity from photovoltaic cells is, is straightforward, simply, they produce it when they are illuminated. For a long time the potential energetic applications of the photocells were limited to laboratories. Only in recent years the use of photovoltaic panels began to expand. Its competitiveness grows rapidly. In times of the Second World War such developments had not been carried on. Instead, nuclear fission was quickly developed when it was known that it could be used to destroy cities. There was not an intention to enter in a value assessment. Simply, a chronology is mentioned. One might think that the frightening but marvelous eruption of nuclear fission generated a false sense of omnipotence in the scientists that produced it. Thus emerged a modern myth, the mirage of an energy that was presented by some of those scientists as clean and almost free. This picture showing some initial cleaning activities in Chernobyl was damaged by the high radiation level that existed in the area. The glamour of that clean and almost free energy is gone, it is more expensive than others, and constantly generates pollution. The enthusiasm for the initial mirage prevented to clearly see the practical difficulties, and so essential processes were neglected, such as disposal of radioactive waste. From the beginning, the waste was temporarily stored near its source, both on military and in civil installations. In general, they remain there. This aerial photo shows stored waste underwater and uncovered in Hanford, Washington. Aerial photo of an area of waste in Russia. Not only fission reactors, but also waste dumps have caused disasters. Lake Karachai in the former Soviet Union, the most polluted area in the world, in some places a human would receive a lethal dose of radiation in minutes. To understand some of the reasons for that, we'll remember the fission mechanism. It generates energy by splitting the nuclei of atoms of heavy elements. Due to that, dangerous long-lived radioactive isotopes are generated. The nuclear power generation by fusion is different. The nuclei of two light atoms, such as hydrogen isotopes, merge. As a result of the interaction of various forces in the atomic nucleus, energy is released. This process is similar to the mechanism that maintains active the sun. It has fewer risks than fission but its realization is difficult. From the environmental standpoint, fusion reactors would clearly outstrip those of fission. They never solved the problem of the waste, that in fusion reactors would be comparatively insignificant. The materials of construction of a fusion reactor can also develop some radioactivity, but of limited entity. Their half-lives would be years or decades, rather than millennia as fission waste. A problem of fusion is that the necessary investments are huge. Due to that, one of the alternatives that is being built is multinational, and does not involve strategic advantages for a particular nation. It can be expected from that, to come out a solution for the whole humanity. This technique requires to handle temperatures over 100 million degrees Kelvin. 
The project is the largest multinational scientific investment after the International Space Station. It is a giant ring-shaped experimental reactor that is being built in Cataract in southern France. The project is called ITER. There the gases are converted to a state called plasma, in which the fusion can be achieved. To handle the high temperature plasma, magnetic fields produced by different windings are used. A big advantage is that in case of accident, the reactor does not melt or explode, it just turns off. It doesn't cause disasters nor generate hazardous products. It has no military value. But in these times of crisis, governments may tend to concentrate their spending on projects involving immediate benefits, economic or military. Some governments began to skimp funds for ITER. In this Knoxville publication, dated July 2008, we see that the National Academy of Sciences was calling for more funding for ITER. We see here the beginning of the document from the National Research Council confirming the interest of the U.S. physicists to strengthen presence in that project. The timeline of the Department of Energy is shown. Timeline set for ITER. The schedule has been delayed about two years. In addition to this international project, some nations begin to explore another fusion type, called inertial laser or x-rays impact on a capsule with hydrogen isotopes. The gases are compressed up to 20 times the density of lead and reach 100 million degrees Kelvin or more. Fusion occurs and generates large amounts of energy. In 2009, in the USA was launched the most potent laser in the world. It is in the NIF, National Ignition Facility, California. In July 2012, it generated a maximum punctual power of 500 trillion watts. Such power is equivalent to the consumption of 500 billion heaters of 1 kilowatt. Of course, that pulse lasts only a moment. The development of lasers may be militarily useful. Presumably, it will be then more likely to get funds for it. It may be that fusion would come earlier this way. At least we would spare a lot of fission caused pollution. Another possibility, the cold fusion, an utopia? From about 1989, some physicists, including a Nobel laureate, wrote about the possibility of fusion energy from a cold electrolytic process. Assuming that the method works, it could be an insurmountable power source. But some apparently successful results have not been consistently replicated. Our attempt to bring the Sun to Earth can be now summarized in two concrete options on which there is active work plus a theoretical possibility that has not been able to be successfully reproduced one the ring reactors as the iter the economic crisis makes it doubtful that the tests be completed on schedule two the laser bombardment as in the nif the development can produce star war technology of military interest that can accelerate results three a hope in study, upon which only an attitude of expectation can be held. Meanwhile, the consumer society is demanding more energy. Fission is increasingly rejected by the risks and waste. It would be fatal to augment those problems, although the governments of some big countries with small weight of public opinion can ignore the dangers. In fact, there is almost a consensus that medium to long-term electronuclear generation solutions will come from fusion. Will be that the future? Or other developments will appear? But, as the years pass, the Sun still sends daily thousands of times more energy than we need. Its massive exploit seems inevitable. The market shows suggestive indications. The photovoltaic industry in Germany grew by 97.8% in 2011, after another similar increase in the previous year. This trend of a powerful economy cannot be ignored. Summarizing, nuclear physics, besides fission, presents us a less risky solution, the fusion. Only time will tell, if by bringing the sun to the earth, humanity finds a way to satisfy their energy requirements or if some other methods will be found, or if it will seek to reach a balance between cravings and constraints.
because in short the cheapest and most efficient kilowatt hour is that one which is not uselessly spent.